stigma of video game adaptations being mediocre at best has been around for years, even decades, with examples ranging from the okay-ish Tomb Raider movie starring Angelina Jolie in the 90s and its subsequent sequel, to the absolutely abysmal work of Uwe Boll. For as long as I can remember, the news of a video game adaptation being brought to the big or sometimes small screen has always been met with skepticism and overall pessimism. There just hasn't been an adaptation that has worked the way we have all wanted it to. Even when we might check out an adaptation just for the sake of morbid curiosity to see if they, they messed it up, we are still disappointed somehow. And it's got to the point where many of us just don't even bother to watch these adaptations at all. And yet, here we are in 2023, and the newly released The Last of Us series is making waves on HBO Max, not just because it's an adaptation of a massively popular game and a beloved story, but because it's actually really damn good. Like, one of the best shows I have watched in a long time good. Now, we're only two episodes into the eight episode season, so maybe there will be something that will come up that absolutely ruins it for me, but... Given the early screenings and reviews and just the sheer quality of the two episodes we've had so far, that doesn't seem likely. And watching these last two episodes has got me thinking about what it is about the show that makes it so successful when there are so many other adaptations that have failed so miserably. And well, there are a few different things that I think have worked in the show's favor and make it the first example I've personally seen of a video ga game adaptation breaking from the curse of a bad adaptation. And today I'm going to talk about the two big ones that come to mind. First off, you just have the two perfect people behind the show, Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann. Uh, Mazin has proved himself a more than competent showrunner with his award-winning Chernobyl series and Druckmann, and I'm sorry to piss off all of you Last of Us Part 2 haters who for some reason want to burn this man at the stake for making a story that you just didn't mesh with. He is the original creator of the game and the story, and through that and its sequel has shown just how good at writing he is. I, he's one of my favorite storytellers right now, and I really just appreciate the way he tells his stories. They both bring the, the right amount of respect for the source material and the characters, while also knowing how to make the necessary changes to help bring the content into an episodic TV format. And there are plenty of changes in the show, um, from getting more information about life before the outbreak, both with Joel and Sarah, and also in other parts of the world, to the spores being absent completely from the show and instead being replaced with this sort of um, hive mind tendril way that the infected well infect other people. But all of these changes work because Mazin and Druckmann know what works for the game and what works for the show and none of these changes take anything away from the story and what's important and in some cases even add more to it that we didn't get in the game. The first episode we see so much more of Sarah's story, of her personality, her character, what she goes through in that initial day before the outbreak happens, and she meets her unfortunate death. It adds depth to everything, and gives you a new perspective on something that we already know. There are ideas that, ideas that just really work, and even make me wish it had been in the game back in 2012. For example, these new tendrils that also contribute to this hive mind of the infected, this idea that if you disturb an infected at one spot, you know, a, a hundred infected across the city are going to know, and they're going to know where they are, and that puts you in immediate danger. That could add so much more to the video game, and even Druckmann himself has said that he wishes he had thought of it back in 2012. But further and most importantly, The Last of Us, as a game, is narrative-driven. While there are plenty of game mechanics and things to make it feel like an actual video game, the story is the main focus, and it always has been. In fact, a lot of criticism has been leveled at the game for being a quote-unquote walking simulator of sorts. Now, I don't agree with that opinion, but it is indicative of how the game puts its characters and plot as the priority. And that focus is a huge reason why it is able to translate to the screen so well. The story of The Last of Us is why people remember the game. 
It is the thing that sticks with us after the credits have rolled and what we talk about when we discuss a game with others. While the gameplay isn't bad by any means, it's not revolutionary or groundbreaking. Now juxtapose that with a game like Doom, which had its own adaptation in the early 2000s, and you find a case of something completely different. Doom, as a game series, is all about the gameplay, the moment-to-moment -moment action of slaying demons, with the guns, the different kinds of weapons, and this frantic, frenetic, fast-paced gameplay. The story, while being there, it's not at the forefront, at least in my opinion. It's kind of on the back burner, honestly. I couldn't really tell you the specifics of a lot of the stories with the Doom games I have played. And that's why the adaptation of Doom couldn't be successful. The story was not innovative enough to warrant sitting through a generic action movie, which is what we got. They took the gameplay, which is something that you have to experience, and when translating that for the big screen, it just becomes generic because it's something we have seen before in movies prior. And the one time where the movie tried to bring its famous gameplay more into focus, when we get that random first person section, it's gimmicky. It doesn't feel right. It feels like the movie is trying too hard to remind you of the game and it becomes a shallow reference rather than a natural part of the movie. With The Last of Us, we have always had this story be the driving force, and that feels natural. That translates well to adjusting to a medium where you cannot hook a person by their physical interaction with the controller, but what is happening to the characters on the screen. It's just such a refreshing thing to see someone adapt something I love so much and do it so well. And it just makes me excited that there are so many more people who can now experience a story that may not have gotten a chance to otherwise, and further get to experience one of my absolute favorite video game theme songs. The Last of Us series truly is a triumph so far, and it has me excited each week for the next episode. It also shows that a video game adaptation can be done, as long as the source material and people behind it is right. Some games just don't work as a passive experience while others are better suited for it. We will see how the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie is in April, as that is another example of a game that is all about the gameplay, but I don't think it's a stretch to say it won't reach the same level as The Last of Us. Even if it's a, a fine movie that, that brings these characters to life and is enjoyable in its own right, it's I'm just not sure it's going to be additive and exceptional as The Last of Us has been. Hopefully we can reach a point where we as a collective fan base, community, society, whatever you want to say, can see some games and appreciate them as they are, while others can be seen for the potential to branch out into other mediums. And neither option is bad, it's okay if there are some games that just don't work on a movie screen or a TV screen. We have to learn to take things as they are and enjoy what we have as we have them. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, subscribe to our channel, and as always, share it with anyone who you think may enjoy it. Um, thank you just again for watching it. We always appreciate you and the views you give us. And for all your TV show news, reviews, gaming, you name it, check back in here with Scoop Hash.